We installed the swivel seat, but in the ProMaster, the cargo area is about six inches lower than the driver and passenger seats. Because of that six inch drop, when you sit in the passenger seat, your feet dangle and hang in the air. And after a while, that won't be very comfortable. So we're going to build a box to raise the height in that area. And as you can see here, I've taped out where that box is going to be with the orange tape. And I'm going to have a curve in this box. In order to make that curve, I'm going to have to bend a three-quarter inch sheet of plywood. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how this is a standard sheet of plywood. It is seven plies. That really makes a difference. The more plies, the better. What we're going to do is we're going to cut a lot of saw curves and thin this piece of wood up so that we can gently bend it. As you saw in the van, I don't need a 90 degree bend. So I don't need that many saw curves. There's actually a website that will calculate how many saw curves that you need and the distance between them. I'll link that website in the description below if you're interested. So I'm going to give this a try. Hopefully it works out the first time. Those are my saw curves. Each one cut approximately the same distance apart. And it went through six of the seven plies of the plywood. And now I'm going to soak it in water. And then I will bend it. Okay, the container I usually use isn't large enough. So I'm just going to take and put this in a five gallon bucket and fill the bucket with water and let it soak. After the wood soaks, it'll become very flexible. Then you make yourself a jig to the shape that you want the wood to form. Now, it's bending in the opposite direction. So we're going to encourage it to go the way we want it to go. Then just screw it down. So now that's going to sit overnight. It'll dry and it'll maintain its shape. Then I'll apply glue, hold it back in this shape, and I will do that after I've extended this piece of wood and I've pretty much finalized the box. Then it'll be sanded and painted so nobody will ever see any of this after it's done. It's important to note that you need to use a multiple ply plywood. This plywood has seven plies, so it was very good for this use. If it was a veneered plywood, it wouldn't work at all. You can't use a veneered plywood. If you use something like Baltic birch or another type of plywood that has a thin veneer on top, 
you're going to see the wood grain from the veneer go in this direction. But that veneer is too thin. It's not as thick as this is. And it will instantly break if you go all the way to that veneer. The layer underneath the veneer, the grain isn't going in this direction. It's going in the opposite direction. So when you go to bend the plywood, it's just going to break. So if you try this the first time and it doesn't work, take a look at your plywood and try again. Because it's very easy to do when you have the right plywood. I bent and curved my piece of wood for the front of the box. And that's going to fit in right here. Then I cut the extension piece, which will fit all the way back against our shower. And those are going to be connected together like that. This will bend, be tweaked a little bit more and bend in like that. And it'll give us a nice gentle curve. Now this wall will be painted, so we're not going to see the changes in wood grain. Now I have to put these two pieces together. So to do that, I'm going to use dowel centers and dowel these pieces together with four dowel pins and then glue it. And once that's dry, it'll actually be stronger than the other areas of the wood. That joint will be very strong. Now if you take a look up here, there's a piece of wood that goes all the way across. This wood is one and a half inches thick and it's going to be bolted in and held in with four riv nuts. The riv nuts have been placed in already existing holes in the frame of the ProMaster. The two on the outside are a quarter twenty and the two on the inside are five sixteenths. The reason they're those sizes is that was the size of the pre-existing holes that I dropped the rib nuts in and tightened them up. I did have to drill the holes out just a little bit for those rib nuts to fit. This is high enough that it will match the top of our footrest and the sheet of plywood will go on top and be hinged so that we'll have storage underneath. If you're building this and you want to replicate what I'm doing here, the size is five and three quarter inches for the height of my wall.